Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace here, dropping in with a little special announcement for those who have followed me for any stretch of time. You know, outside of the businesses that I run, like Myriad Business Solutions, the Visionetics Institute, Odyssey Media Group, I also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in Houston, Dallas, and other areas. Uh, I'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you. Dropping in on you. Uh, hope everybody's having a great uh, start to your week so far. Look, I am going to try to get through this um, as quickly as I possibly can. You saw the intro. You know the routine if you follow me. We need support. We need you to uh, contribute we need you to donate uh, we've been doing this work for over 30 years uh, and I'm not going to get into it uh, the way I really want to because that's not why I'm here I was having a conversation and something sparked on me about a passion and I've written about this multiple times I've lectured on it I've lectured on it in both men's and women's conferences as a matter of fact uh, giving both perspectives, same same stance, same position from two different views. And I'm going to talk about it here. And that is the notion or idea of the independent, strong black woman. Every time I hear strong black woman, I cringe. And before you get in your feelings, uh, let me explain to you why. First, Anytime I hear that word, it tells me some black woman is doing something beyond what she was designed to do. It is not normally applied to the black woman who has a strong, supportive black man helping her hold the family down and making sure she's financially secure and making sure she's physically safe. It's normally for a black woman that's taking on a role that's outside of the scope of her natural capacity. And it, it, it happens in a lot of times, it's not because she chose it, it's because some kind of way she ended up walking the journey alone. She is now a single parent. But I want to give you a contrast by which you can frame what I'm going to share with you. And I'm not just talking at the side of my head. I was a single father to my older children. And not one time did anyone ever hear, and I haven't ever heard a single father say, I'm the father and the mother or being a single father or a single parent as a man makes me strong and independent. There's almost an understanding and acknowledgement when you watch a man doing it. There needs to be a woman in there. There's something missing, but there is a designation of strength assigned with moving outside of the scope of one's capacity when it particularly applies to female blacks. It's not done in any other race. That should always, these are some of the things you should look at. Is this the norm in other races? How are other races faring in comparison to us? Now, if we were talking about strong black women and blacks were just killing it, and we were climbing the socioeconomic ladder, we were taking positions of power in every social 
uh, and political uh, spectrum, then we say maybe we might be on to something. And this isn't me saying the woman belongs barefoot, pregnant in the kitchen. I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying that in whatever she does, she's uniquely designed for specific things, and so is the male. There's a reason why it takes a male and a female to procreate, because it takes two different types of energy, two different ways of thinking. The man thinks from front to back. His brain functions from front to back. It's about accomplishment. It's about uh, what he can do, how he, how well he fares with what he does, what he says. The woman moves from left to right. Her brain moves from left to right. It's about intuition. It's about her spiritual capacity to be able to inspect things without having prior knowledge. Now, when you move these two together, they can do some unbelievable things. But when they're alone, they both lack things that the other is strong in. But so so let, let me explain something to you. So the first problem is it's not applied to men. You don't hear black men claiming to be mother and father when they are single parents. Never did it, never went through my mind. Matter of fact, it was clear to me that there was something missing. It was clear to me that obviously there needed to be some feminine energy in that home in a position of authority someone that could bring some balance because while I can be loving, caring, and nurturing, um, my primary role was to stand in authority and protection uh, when necessary to apply discipline. And I could love and hug. I was very affectionate with my kids. So that's not what was missing. It wasn't the affection, but there's a nurturing spirit inside of the female that just simply isn't there with me. Just like there is a sense of identity and purpose and protection that's just, you're gonna naturally feel safer in the presence of a man who's handling his business as a child. And then there are all these other things that come along with just simply being, not just the parenting part, but being single parents is where it starts. That's where you start to get the praise as a black, independent, strong black woman. Here's the problem with that dynamic. you'll often hear women who carry that title and it's been in it's and it's a title of praise it's something that's worn with a great deal of pride here's the problem though and i'm not saying that the black woman isn't exceptionally strong i'm saying that the idea of the independent black woman is always applied to the single black woman that's out there doing way more than she should by herself and what you will almost always hear is Nobody was there to help me. I can't get no help. Somebody's got to do it, right? Here's the problem. The moment you start establishing yourself in the vein of being this independent, strong black woman, what I can tell you is as a black man who is seen as that person in my circle, strong people don't get help. Nobody goes running to the aid of the strong person. Nobody goes running to the aid of the person who's holding it down, despite the fact that they need a lot of help. Men naturally respond to the vulnerability in a woman. Doesn't mean I want you to be weak. It means I want you to be able to sink into me so that I can cover you. And... I need to know, matter of fact, that you are strong, but your strength isn't in standing alone and doing it all by yourself, although that's where you get all your praise. Matter of fact, there's an all-out assault on the woman who wants to be in the home and loving on a man and loving on her children and doing anything that's quote-unquote considered domestic. Oh, my God, she's lost in time. She needs to get out of there. That's so vulnerable. That's so weak. She's covered. She's in a safe place if he's doing what he's... Now, if a man isn't doing what he's supposed to do, this isn't applying to him. This is applying to men who are doing what they're supposed to do. And this is applying to women who, without recognizing it, are alienating the help. And this isn't just from men. This is from friends. I can tell you, as that dude... I literally have to be very suspicious. If I have a need, I have to be very suspicious, specific. 
and what I'm going to need from somebody. Because if I just said, man, it's getting rough out here. It's followed up normally with, man, I know how it is. Man, I'm going to be praying for you. Keep your head up. End. But the person that, you know, looks like, you know, man, I'm badly holding it together. And that's who people see them at. People are more willing to sit up and say, what do you need? Well, imagine that it's the same way with a woman. When you're constantly screaming, I got it, they're going to let you have it. Unfortunately, I'm not saying it's right. What I'm saying is every time I hear strong black woman or independent black woman or independent, strong, strong, independent black woman, whatever, any of those things, it's always a company are followed or represented by a black woman standing alone, carrying the torch, the load, the volume, and the roles of more than one person. And unfortunately, a lot of times I see it, I gotta be the father and no, you can't be the father. You can try to fill some gaps in some roles, but that role is reserved for the male. And hopefully we can get our men to stand up because, again, that's a problem. That's one of the reasons I am so avid about black men lead. Why? Because it properly socializes young black males early in life and prepares them for the roles that they must step into as they move into adulthood. You can't take young boys who don't know what manhood is and expect them to exemplify it. You can't expect them to snatch it out the air. You can't expect because mama told you this is how women want to be treated, that that's manhood. No, that's how women want to be treated. Manhood is so much more than treating a woman the way she wants to be treated. And it's real hard to treat a woman the way she wants to be treated when you're not operating in your masculinity. Because there are some times a woman won't admit it, but she wants you to sit up and say, this is not what we're going to do. It's not good for us. I got you. It's, she, she's going to throw a tantrum. She's going to get mad, but she's going to sit back and say, he took the lead. He, he, he stood in. I'm tired of seeing black women being applauded for killing themselves. And then the question comes, well, what happens when there's no dude here? That's a part of this whole social enigma that I've given so much attention to, that I've written about, that I've spoken, I've lectured about, the healing that needs to take place. You can't take your brokenness in and out of relationships and expect to, and expect to cultivate meaning long lasting relationships that are ideal for parenting. We can't sit up and get put the horse before the before the cart the cart before the horse whatever it's saying is the cart before the horse we can't put the cart before the horse and and what i mean by that is we go out and we just procreate then we try to make it work we we, we haven't developed a foundation for the relationship we haven't developed a plan for ourselves we haven't determined what it means for us to stay in this and go. We haven't really truly matured into an understanding of what it takes to have longevity in a relationship. We are abiding in a culture where it's now not only acceptable, it's expected to outgrow relationships. So when it gets hard, you just step away from it. Nobody has to actually hunker down and sit up and understand that nobody's getting through life without having difficult times. You imagine being with a person that thinks differently and processes information differently than you do every day of the year for the rest of your life. You don't think there are going to be moments where you're looking at him and going, man, I should just go upside his head. That would make me feel so good. And he's looking like, man, I'm going to go in there and get my suitcase and I'm gonna, I am ain't ever coming back. But there's got to be something inside of you that says, no matter where I go, there's going to be differences. No matter where I go, there's going to be. If this person loves me, if this person treats me with kindness, if this person treats me with respect, if this person shows me attention and effort to try to be and do the things that I know 
and want and desire, then I've got to do the same for them. And I guarantee you that you're going to find the energy and the effort is going to be encouraging. It's going to be a bonding mechanism. But when everything is about, well, I'm going to ride it until, oh, well, I don't feel it anymore. I'm not happy anymore. I'm not in love anymore. That's the big one. I'm not in love anymore. That shit just came into marriage in the 13th century. It wasn't about being in love. It was about loving someone. That's a difference. Being in love with someone is the oh, ah, oh, why. Loving someone is saying, I'm committed to your best. I'm committed to being benevolent to you. I'm committed to honoring you. I'm committed to being the best. And that's what we're trying to teach men. But women have to also have that. But what I can tell you is when a, when, when, when a woman who is classified or seeing herself or dressed as a strong black woman, there's a certain level of attitude that comes with it. It has to be in order to be able to stand up to all the stuff that she's going through. The problem is that negative energy, the negative freakery is oozing out into the kids. It's having an impact on the sun. It's literally synchronizing with the daughter. And you're creating offspring that are at a very early age incapable of long-term relationships with the opposite sex. Improper environment, improper engagement, improper notions and assessments. This is uh, sociology one-on-one. -on -one. If you want to produce something, you've got to have a way of presenting it. That's gotta be an environment that sets the, the notion. Um, and I'm not saying it's easy. That's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying that it, as long as marriages have two people, minimal, there's always going to be a chance something's not going to go right. Why? Because it takes two wanting it simultaneously. All it takes is one not to want it at one particular time. And it becomes a problem because one person can't fix it. Anytime one person doesn't want it and the other person does, the person that wants it is at a disadvantage, is vulnerable, can be taken advantage of, can be manipulated. And that's not how things operate. Normally what a person is going to do is when they see that, they're going to step back. So what it takes is two people in the beginning saying, no matter what, as long as you don't abuse me, as long as you don't mistreat me, as long as you show me respect and kindness and I see the benevolence and the intent of benevolence towards me, we're going to ride this thing. That's got to be that part. What we can't do is sit up and say, this is just how it is. Y'all over there, we over here, we're going to come together, we're going to bump uglies, we're going to create kids. Then we're going to go do our thing somewhere else. We're going to get together somebody else, bump uglies, make kids, and move around. And then when you look up, we've got this situation. And I'm not talking from a place of judgment. I'm talking from a place of experience of how hard it is to be a father and, and when you've got kids in multiple households. And you have a responsibility to each kid. Because... You didn't think things through. You have the, see, it's, it's, it, it, it's, you can have the greatest intent you want. You can have all the love you want for your kids, but you can only be in one place at one time. And it can wear on you, trust me. Trying to be in multiple places, multiple times, do everything that you want to do. And while the effort can be appreciated, I guarantee you, it cannot match what can happen if you had all your kids in the house. Again, this is not judgment. This is saying because we didn't get it right don't mean we just sit on it. We've got to hold one another accountable of producing a generation that can do it a little better than we did. Because obviously the way we did it isn't working. What am I getting at? Instead of hearing the term strong black woman, I would l l love to hear powerful black woman and powerful black man used 
synonymously and in sync with one another and with a level of equality where we are recognizing the awesomeness in both but not praising the dysfunction in a reality and I'm not saying a single mother is dysfunctional I'm saying that the situation and environment is it's not highly functional it simply is not just because you can hammer a nail with a shoe doesn't make it the best uh, approach to getting the job done and you're gonna damage the shoe and the more you nail with that shoe the less it's gonna be comfortable and functional as a shoe that's what anything when you're operating outside of the scope of what you were designed to do, you not only are not going to be good at this thing you're trying to do that you weren't designed to do, you're going to diminish, diminish your capacity to do what you were designed to do. You're not going to get 100% on either side. And that is not what we need right now. You have to understand every time someone hears or identifies a person as strong, that person is not likely to be the recipient of aid and help. Nobody's running to the rescue of a strong person. You constantly upset because nobody will help is because you're strong. Again, not to be confused with powerful. And the negative in in again the idea and the notion and the fact that this isn't a dynamic in any other group. I mean, don't get me wrong. You know, single mothers who do stuff get praised in any group. You did a great job. You did a great job with Tommy. You did a great job, you know, raising Becky. You did, you know. But never are they praised in a sense that isolates them and gives this larger than life appearance to them to where they start to feel like they don't need a man and when that happens when you get to that mind where you don't need a man there is a mindset that is trickling down to the offspring to the progeny to the children that's saying this is how it is I don't care what you tell them, they're watching what's happening. Social learning theory, it's so much more powerful than what we say. Kids don't do what you tell them to do, what you say. They do what they see you do. You're not going to tell them, don't do what mommy does. Do what I say. No. Well, while you're watching, soon as you turn your back, I'm going to do what you're doing. Obviously, it's fun. Obviously, it's good. It works for you. Why would I do something different when you hold it on to it for dear life? We need black men and black women to understand the importance of connectivity. We need to learn how to celebrate our women without applying these assignments of identity that isolate them because what you look up and see is a decline in what we're producing in the results that we're getting and it's because we're not operating in our divine nature there's masculine energy there's feminine energy there's a desire to protect there's a desire to nurture there's a desire to guide and, and, and cover. There's a desire to love and inform and advise and come together. No one is more important than the other. No one is to dominate the other. There is a perfect merging and there is a trust that has to exist. This is the thing that I'm speaking of that concerns me is we've lost our trust for one another. We've lost our trust to be in long-term relationships. We're chasing this idea of happiness 
when the person who's responsible for our happiness is self. Your mate isn't responsible for your happiness. They're responsible for enhancing the environment in which you create your happiness. They come along and they create a greater capacity for you to do what you do to make you happy. They're not there to rescue you from dark ideas and thoughts. That's your work to do the healing, to do the preparation, to, uh, to get ready to be in a relationship. You're supposed to go in whole, not perfect, but whole. Male or female. That's something that we are going to have to be willing to do. So that's why I cringe every time I hear strong black woman. Because it means there's a sister in the vicinity that's doing more than she should be. On that note, I'm, I'm, I'm going to challenge you guys to really think about what I shared with you. And on, on another note, support the work we're doing at the Odyssey Project. From the research center to the think tank, to program creation and implementation, to boots on the ground, we've been doing it for decades. I'm challenging you to support the work we do. Go in the description box and give. We've got a bill. We've got to build. We've got to reverse an entire social paradigm that's been engineered into our thinking that's working against us. They're not going to do it. They're benefiting from it. It's our responsibility. It's not going to happen with the glitz and the glare of nonprofit industrial complex ran organizations. It's going to happen with people who actually give a damn. We need to make that happen. Look in the description box, click the link, and give. That's my challenge. On that note, I'm out of here. Thank you.